Do you like tanks? Racing? Spaceships? And math? Good day, mates. Hello, mates. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Canadian Computer Collector. I am joined by my wonderful brother, the brotherly Canadian Computer Collector today, as we dive into a strange and unusual console that you've heard of, but I had not. Yeah, I would say I've heard of it. I don't think I've ever seen one. I don't think I've ever known anybody who owned one. That's right, folks. It's the Magnavox Odyssey 2. Oh, that's, there's a 2. That's right. This is. I think that's squared. Is it squared? It's the Odyssey squared. It's actually quite complete, uh, which we'll get into in a moment. I just want to find the year on this thing. Right. Let's see. Crud wheat. No, maybe Fabric K. Inside. Yeah, probably in the manual. Just looking at the box, obviously there's a lot of action involved here. Uh, this is, to me, uh, a very obscure console. I'd never heard of it. Everything on the side is saying it's a product from uh, Canada. Like it's saying it's from Scarborough, Ontario. Really, the gameplay is super basic. Yeah, but you can see that they're really showing off the multiple colors on screen at once. This box also has French on the side, so this one. Obviously, it was sold in Canada. I just wonder if maybe it was a Canadian product sold worldwide, or maybe if it was just sold here. I don't know. But it is a Philips Magnavox product. Ooh, Philips. They're a brand that people know. You wouldn't want just, yes. you wouldn't want just one <laughs> Philips. You know what they say, manure it isn't the best fertilizer, but it's a solid number two. Here we go. Let's go. Okay, so, the Super Mario Odyssey 2. <laughs> All right, so we got documentation. We have Pickaxe Pete, the game. On VHS. <laughs> Actually, yeah, these are really interesting. Oh, look at that. Oh, that actually reminds me a lot of the console, or of the cartridges for um, Commodore 64. No, not Commodore 64. Atari. Okay. Uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to say ColecoVision? I think Coleco had similar cartridges. So here's a game we have called UFO. Oh. Very exciting stuff. <laughs> Same kind of cool package. Although it's weird how the graphic on all these are the same. It just says the name up in the corner. Wow, that's eh. really lazy. He has already closed since he is retired. <laughs> uh, we have Speedway Spinout. Oh. Crypto, oh no, I think it's three games. Speedway, Spinout, and Crypto Logic. Do the Crypto Bros know no bounds? Oh, this one has a log, uh, a logo on the front. It does have a logo. This one has a uh, been pitching logs on the front, crunching logs. Cool. Uh, up next, we have Armored Encounter and Sub Chase. This is the one that I actually think might be fun. Armored Encounter or Sub Chase? Either one of them. Oh, this one's good. This one's been played quite a bit. Yeah, that's a good sign. The logger is uh, peeling off. Lager is your beer bro now? <laughs> Talk about an IPA? I gotta admit, I'm really impressed with the condition of these. Yeah, you uh, you got a hell of a collection here. And what else is this? We have Casey Munchkin. This looks like one game on a cartridge. I love how it's just like word soup on this whole thing everywhere. This is expanded memory. Ooh. So this probably has like its own memory modules on it. Then. Ooh. It's incredible how many cartridges, I didn't even realize they would be doing this going this far back, but I know that like, you know, Super Nintendo with uh, the Super FX chip, mm -hmm. right? That was a big deal for like expanding um, the computing power of stuff. Everyone remembers the DK64 expansion pack? Yeah, you know the reason yeah. for that, right? Oh yeah, that's a good story. Because it was very sloppily written, and so the game would crash every 30 something minutes. Yeah, uh, because of memory leak. And so instead of fixing it, they just realized that they could include the incredibly costly expansion pack and give it another four megabytes of, re <laughs> of uh, memory, then it would only crash every ten or so hours. Here's a very clicky power adapter. That's reassuring. <laughs> yeah. It's got a nice Odyssey 2 or squared branding on it. This would make a great display piece, all of these. Uh, RF adapter or whatever it is. Oh, those are so ugly. Kids, if you're watching this, we used to have to screw antennae on with screws, <laughs> wires to the antenna. And that antenna would be like like 20 feet tall and on your roof. Here comes the real meat and potatoes. I don't know, I'm Ariel the Mermaid. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Ariel!
<gasps> I can breathe finally. All right, so Stack and I have swapped seats now, but nonetheless, my first thought was this is extremely light. Yes. Uh, my first thought was this power button is kind of rotated within its socket. <laughs> and my second thought was I remember this type of awful like touchpad keyboard. It's a membrane keyboard, I believe they call it. Like the earliest of membrane keyboards. Yeah. And I'm having like like flashbacks to when I was a kid using these things and they were so awful and imprecise. Like this would be terrible to type on. Let's bust out a TV, put this thing up and actually give it a little test drive. Let's do it. Even the twist tie on here is old. That's what we have. Uh, do you have an RF adapter for an S or a Super NES? We'll just use that. <clears throat> Literally any old console. You don't have like a, like a Mad Cats one yet. Well, actually, hold on. So this goes where the, remember I was talking about putting these on the screws? The screws on the back of a CRT TV. Is this what we have? Oh my God. Let me see what it looks like. This, this is what he brings me. Yeah, I don't have anything else with screws. Well, all right, let's have an authentic 1980s experience. All right, as you can see, we are hooking everything up to this old Commodore TV. Now, we thought we needed the RF adapter to hook it up to the metal screws, but this TV doesn't have them, so we tried to plug in this cable from the actual console directly into the TV. Seems like it fits. If we can't do that, what are we going to use? Show them, Stan. <laughs> I can't even hold this with my injured arm. This is ridiculous. I don't want to play games on this. It's the Jesus Christ mini TV. Okay, so here we go. Power on the TV. Did you not take the sign? No, we need a console. Or a game, sorry. So let's try Pickaxe Pete. Got that classic CRT wine, which we all just put up with in our homes for years and years. It's nice to know that my hearing isn't damaged enough for me to not hear it anymore. Alright, TV number two. Okay, the star child. No. Now? No. Ah, uh, we're gonna have to try this shitty little TV. Okay, you wanna button click it? Okay. Uh, we're on VHF. Yeah. Do you have power? Yeah. Channel three or four is what it usually says to go to. Uh, oh, hold on. TV. Just switched it. Any luck? No. Okay, it would appear we have hit an impasse. We need to get ourselves an RF adapter. That's why we can't run it on any sort of regular TVs right now. Uh, that's probably why my Commodores aren't showing up at all too, so hey. this could be very good for unlocking the future. Unlocking the past. You know who I am, I'm the guy that loves to unlock time. Anyway, we're gonna order that part and we will be right back. All right, gang, we are back on day two of the Magnavox Odyssey 2, uh, and we now have RF adapters. <laughs> and I have wicked allergies today because plants are just like, I wanna Long story short, plants are going to do their thing, and we're going to try and make this Odyssey work. So let's bust out a TV and uh, try and play some great games. Okay, all right, we have everything plugged in as we believe we should. Now, uh, let's start with Casey Munchkin, maybe. Oh yeah, that's CRT squeal. Okay, power. Channel three or four. Yo! Yay! You know what? That reminds me exactly of when we were young trying to figure out which channel it was supposed to be on. And you go to one, it's kind of blurry, and you're like, oh crap, or they like, did something wrong. <laughs> no, did. All right, you wanna fire it up? 
Whoa, sh What'd you press? Okay, here we go. This is just Pac-Man, isn't it? Yeah, Casey Munchigan is apparently an unlicensed Pac-Man, if I had to guess. He's, so, a, he's a munchkin. This is very clearly not Pac-Man, because he's neither a man nor does he pack. Oh, I got greedy. Okay. You got greedy, Martin. All right, let's, I, I want to turn with the munchkin. Oh, you got to hold it the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> you let go. All right. <laughs> okay, that's good for Casey Munchkin. Wow, and that's about as fun as this game gets. <laughs> oh, jeez. Next up, we have... Regles du jeu officiel, Pierre Le Pioche. <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell this is Canadian, probably even... Probably even from Quebec because the French is first. Okay, here we go. Odyssey 2. Select your game. Oh, you're probably selecting your game <laughs> level when you select that. Oh, what is this? It's Mario. Sort of, yeah. It's, it is. This is like. Except a, Mario always has the hammer. It's like a very ghetto version of Mario. Or no, Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong, sorry. Yeah. I thought it was up, but then when there's I got a key up there. Oh, there's a key. Uh, I'd say only kind of. Come and pick X, Pete. Because I'm always picking my X. <laughs> okay, here we go with UFO. What game do you think this is? Space Invaders? Uh, I bet you this No, is... this is uh, Asteroid. Yeah, here, let's see if that one goes. Oh, there you go. Yeah, this is just Asteroid, but you're shooting like math blasters. Also, like, I, I can't figure out how to aim. So you shoot whatever direction you're moving. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you can see where your aiming reticle yeah. is by like the one that's lit up more. I just never stopped shooting, that's why I couldn't see it. It's kind of unforgiving. Oh my god. Wow. I just got, got shot roasted down. by that thing. A <laughs> realistic simulation of armored warfare. Let's see how realistic this is. Realistic. Dan? Caprice. Okay, so let's start with numeric one. Oh, interesting. Why are there like? Are you? Oh, you're the bomber plane, I guess. Trying to hit the submarine. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, I can shoot back. This is a two-player game. Oh, cool. Oh, we are cooking now. Oh, and you can speed up. Oh, you can aim the bomb too. Yes. Oh, I can that? go up and down. Oh, what? So, oh, this is actually quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is legit. Oh, yeah! Oh, here we go. Hold on. Oh, it's like reversed. No? Up is forward. <laughs> you go in the direction of your tank wing. I don't know where. Oh, <laughs> ballsy. What? <laughs> what the heck was that? <laughs> I guess we now know the secret to this game. <laughs> Whoa. How'd you do that? Do what? What? You can... That's oh, what you were curving yours I didn't even realize yeah, didn't that. Even <laughs> nope. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Right. So we have three games here. We have Speedway, Spin Out, and Crypto Logic. All right, game number one, Speedway. All right, let's go. Cool. This looks like it could be fun. Doesn't <laughs> hype. What happens when you press the button? It's a good time to remind viewers that uh, Stace has a Formula One channel on YouTube. Yeah, uh, fiends. Spelled F one E N D S. F one N S. Yeah. But the whole idea is that he is a passionate Formula One fan, and he likes bring some humor to it. Oh my but god! Also to talk about topical content. Okay, so number two is Spin Out. Oh, is this two player? Never. Uh, let's go skill one. Oh, okay. Let's see how this goes. Should we go the right way there, bud? I don't know. I don't think you are. Oh. <laughs> Apparently it is not important. I guess maybe uh, like Mario Kart, this game can be broken. That is one 
this place. Is what? Crazy. Just drove through you? <laughs> yeah, well, don't pick. Oh, dang. <laughs> How are you going that fast? Button. Oh, yeah. There's only one button. I figured if you press it, it probably does something. What is this? All right, well, let's try a game Crypto Logic. Crypto Logic. Crypto Logic. The enciphering line top and deciphering line bottom will automatically appear on the screen. Type any word or message up to 14 letters on the enciphering line. Okay, I'm done. Enter. Okay, so, so you, what you do is you type a secret message. Then you try to figure it out. And I try to guess it, so. Okay, let's try this. Reset. All right, ready? Okay, <clears throat> come on back, and then you have to type it in, and I think when you put the wrong letter in, it just made it here. Yeah. I don't want people to know in advance, they're going to be playing along with you. Okay. Well, let us know in the comments if you get it before either of us. <laughs> oh, wow, it's even different from the, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> I can see the merit of this game. Yeah, it's you can have terrible. some fun with this. I bet you it would be a lot of fun. I'm certain that there's no swear filter. Yeah. So when you're a kid, probably like putting vulgar words on here would be happy. <laughs> but did we play all the games? I think that's everything. Uh, well, folks, I think we can conclude that actually the Magnavox Odyssey isn't that bad it's a very early example of um an at-home console that's also a little bit of a computer you know it has a built-in uh, membrane keyboard and stuff but we found the two-player games were a pretty decent time i think the real lesson here is that knockoff video games are bad yeah the single player games that we were playing that were like the donkey kong knockoff the asteroids knockoff uh what was the third one uh pac-man pac-man knockoff you know i feel like it'd be hard to get decent amount of enjoyment out of that for a full evening. The Pac-Man one, maybe you could go through. The Asteroid one was just super hard to control. I mean, if this was 1982 or whatever, I would be taking that cartridge back to Toys R Us and say, can I please get a different game? Like, this is brutal. And they'd be like, no refund. Uh, you know what was really fun was Sub Chase. Yes, that was a, that was a legitimately good game. And Sub I would, Chase was excellent. I would play that again. You know what I thought was really good too, but unfortunately only had two tracks, was that racing game. Anyway, I think this is probably a good place to end this one. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the old videos on the channel. Also check out Stace's channel, Fiends, or F1Ns is the way it's spelled. It's where if the you F1, like Formula One. It's where the F1 never ends. That's right, where the F1 never ends. Uh, I also want to thank all of our patrons, so let's quickly grab the list. Thank you so much to Andy, David G, Larry C, Justin M, Ron's Computer Vids, Jason S, Adam M, Group Ride, Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, Trina C, Garth B, Mac84, Ethan P, and Ron R. I just wanted to say, if I was the new captain of a starship, I would choose you all as my crew. If you want to join the Patreon, uh, it's $1 a month, and you can get a shout-out in each video, and your name in the credits, and in the description. So be sure to check that out right now in the description. If Patreon's not your bag, try uh, Buy Me a Coffee, which might not be a bad one for you. Anyway, that's all the promotion that we have to do, so thanks again for tuning in. I'm the Canadian Computer Collector. This is the Brotherly Computer Collector saying wicked wild wicked wild wild west oh we should test the commodore real quick Let's do it here we go yeah that's uh that's good oh drop the channel oh the commodore works so now yeah. that unlocks a world of possibility but we're getting weird, like I'm getting that line, the refresh line, like right yeah. on the screen.